they don't provide any commentary at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Put the video title in their title and then put reaction after it and post it. Sometimes they watch the video before they react. That doesn't make any sense, right? No. I'll say I did watch this video before I reacting to it today. I watched this and decided that I wanted to talk about it after. Subscribe! Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Okay. To all the uh, reaction content creators and people that watch reaction content creators, I myself do reactions on my streams. Okay, let's. I don't do reactions ever because it's disgusting, lazy, uh, slap content and very wrong. And nobody should ever do reactions. It's just so foul. <laughs> let's get all of that out the way, okay? I'm not talking about the pioneers of reaction content creators, right? I'm talking about, y'all know those one content creators that say they have a passion for content, a passion for content creating, and what do you do? You go to their channel and their channel is just full of them sitting in a chair and watching a video that someone else spent months, weeks, or days creating. Just put that backwards, sorry, I'm kind of fried right now. I'm not sitting in a chair, to be clear. Not that I do reaction content because, it's, again, it's very lazy and disgusting. Technically speaking, at all times, I am standing up straight. <laughs> I'm never, ever, ever sitting in any of these videos. I'm always up straight on my feet. But they don't provide any commentary at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Put the video title in their title and then put reaction after it. Yeah. And post it. They I, I, I think that for me, one of my biggest, I don't know, pet peeves, complaints, I really don't like it when somebody just takes the title and then copy and like control C, control V's it into their title and then just says like, you know, X reacts. Um, me, I do always put that I, it's a reaction in the title because I also additionally don't like it when content creators who do reactions make it seem like they're doing their own commentary and it's a reaction video. Because a lot of times, have you ever seen this where a content creator posts a video, but it, it looks like based on the thumbnail and the title that it was a video that they made and it's not a reaction. I don't like that. I'd like to be clear and honest that it is a reaction video if you're going to click on it because then you're not like, oh, well, I don't want to fucking watch this reaction if you don't like reaction content. It's especially problematic. And I'm going to be honest, uh, this is a big, this is maybe a criticism for some content creators that you like and I like. I think it is especially problematic to copy and paste somebody's titles when you are the bigger content creator. I think technically speaking for me, it doesn't really matter. I don't do it anyway. I will always change the title to some extent or just have a totally different title for that reason. But if you're the bigger content creator and you take the exact same title and put it in your title, even if you put like X reacts at the end of it, right? The problem is, is that it fucks over the algorithm for the original video entirely, like completely. You fuck over somebody else's SEO, you fuck over somebody else's algorithm. If you're a significantly larger content creator or even a content creator around the same size, it means that like their video actually will be hurt in the algorithm when you just straight up word for word bar for bar copy their title. I don't like it. I always try to transform the title or like I will try to have a totally different title with different words or different keywords if I can, or I'll do a variation on it. So at least it's, it's like obviously different. It doesn't matter as much because my channel is not that big and most of the content creators that I react to are significantly larger. So it doesn't actually affect it that much, but uh, it does fuck over the content that you're reacting to if you're a big creator and you use the exact same title. I, it, that's a huge pet peeve of mine. I really, really don't like that. I also personally am not a fan of when reaction content creators will just take the thumbnail and put it in their thumbnail and then slap their face on top of the thumbnail that somebody else made. That's like peak laziness because thumbnails don't take that much time and I really don't like it at all. Sit there for like five or however long the video is, pause it. Sometimes this is what I, sometimes they watch the video before they react. That doesn't make any sense, right? No, 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 it doesn't. I'll say I did watch this video before I reacting to it today, being honest. Usually I don't do that. Uh, occasionally I watch like the first minute or so. However, I watched this and decided that I wanted to talk about it after. But I'm trying to do a good job of reacting respectfully regardless of that fact. Because I just like this topic and I didn't watch it with the intention of like, oh, I'm going to pre-watch this and watch it on Twitch. I just thought it would be interesting to show you after I watch it because I, I like this content creator and I think he has interesting ideas. So I tend to watch most of the stuff he puts out. Like aren't reactions supposed to be like genuine, like authentic, raw 
Reactions, no, no, no. What people do, I'll, I'll use my skits as an example. What people do is they would watch a video and then they would, y'all know how people pre-fire, like when you're about to turn the corner on Call of Duty, they pre-fire you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. people basically pre-fire their reactions. Yeah. Right? They watch the video and then they <laughs> pre-fire whatever the f they're gonna do at these certain points of the video. Maybe they yeah. write it down. Maybe it's that bad. And then they post- I don't think anybody writes it down. I think it's probably just like you already know the line of argumentation and you want to sound like a smart guy. So you start that line of argumentation before the video you're reacting to gets to it. I personally think that there is sometimes merit in a little bit of pre-watching if you are talking about a complicated, more controversial topic. I typically will never watch like a whole video up front unless I tell you guys. I will tell you guys if I watch the full video front to end and then I watch it. However, a lot of times I will like watch like the first minute or so and then skim through a video if I if it's a difficult, complicated topic or I'm not familiar with the creator, um, just just to know that I understand what it is I'm getting into by watching it, because you don't want to put yourself in like a weird situation live where it's like, oh, shit, like this it went way fucking off the rails and we're getting into some stuff that I didn't know we was getting into today. My bad, my bad, you know, like so that's kind of where like I don't think you should pre-watch the whole video most of the time. However, I think there's a little bit of benefit of doing like a little bit of pre-screening for some videos on some topics. The reaction. Some people say they want to be a content creator because they have a passion for content creating. Some people are straight up and just say they just want the money. If you are one of those people, do not make content. You're, you're not even yeah. making any content. I'll understand if it's a stream, right? Because I already know what people are gonna do. They're gonna be like, bro, that's what you do in your streams, right? Like your streams mm -hmm. are based around you bitching about something or you complaining and then you react and then you yap some more and then you maybe react some more, yap some more and then play a game or something like that. It's different. Same. You know, the thing is, is that people see such a small part of my streams because obviously the reactions are we get posted for the most part, right? Or like me specifically talking about a topic. But on stream, I do so much other random shit. <laughs> I do random shit. I look at other stuff. I have a clips channel for some of that stuff, but... I think sometimes I'm a little sad because I think sometimes the more fun versions of me are never put on YouTube and it kind of sucks. But yeah, it's kind of what I do on stream. I'd be yapping and reacted and yapping and reacted. It's a lot of fun. It's great. Come over here if you have time, YouTube, if I post this or I'm going to get you with my little grippy hands. Come say hi on Twitch. Hee hee ha ha. When it's on a stream, right? Because it's first of all on, on a stream, like that's when you can pause the video give your take on whatever you just reacted to, interact with the chat, Yeah. this, that, and the third, right? But you know- I think part of it is also that the point of streaming is to be candid. If everything is scripted and planned out on a stream, I don't, I don't know that there's many people that do that, and I don't know that those streams are particularly popular. The point is at most that you have sort of a loose like idea of what a stream is, but you're never like, people are not planning their stream top to bottom. Uh, the point is that it's live, you know? The point is that you're getting a more pure, like, you know, pure, whatever you want to call it, pure, form of content where you're you're getting them be, just being themselves for hours at a time you never know if somebody already watched the video or not i mean i don't know you can kind of see it if it's oh, yeah. live you yeah know, what i always say is viewers are really really smart okay they can tell no they're not <laughs> okay some viewers are smart a lot of viewers are silly little dented little guys and that's okay most of us are dented oh whether like especially now in 2024 they can they can tell whether you're authentic or not if, if you're being real mm, or not. they can see you right through that maybe not back in the day like i don't know like when reactions first started popping but around now bro viewers are really really smart the internet is very very like they're getting so advanced man like that's why i, I push this realness like I'm trying to make this a movement, man. Like everybody just go back to being real, bro, because you will not succeed trying to fake shit now, man. Like, and if you do, mm. hey, hey, hats off to you, man. But I know that some are gonna go, oh, you're gonna talk about being a genuine content creator. You're a VTuber, what are you talking about? Yeah, well, I like to not wear pants and not get banned by Twitch when I'm streaming or, uh, you know, not have to put on makeup and all of that other stuff. And there's a lot of reasons why people are VTubers. That doesn't mean that you can't be a genuine personality as a VTuber. A lot of VTubers do, you know, and that's totally fine. But I do think that there is something to be said that I think a lot of people are kind of tired of the influencer type of personality. I think that there was a time and place for where that influencer personality where people were you know, really rich and really highly, uh, what's the word? Highly produced and really perfected and sort of more like regular celebrities and less like a person that you're interacting with. 
I do think that a lot of the sheen of that has worn off, especially because a lot of those those content creators ended up being kind of awful people, if we can be honest. <laughs> and I think especially if we're talking about streaming and because there's a little bit of time about streaming and videos in this at the same time, I think for streaming specifically, it will be hard to be successful as a streamer and as a streamer content creator if there is not a level of authenticity to you. Whatever level that is, it's different for people with whatever kind of content they want to do or whatever, you know, uh, whatever their goals are with their content creation. But I think as a streamer, being authentic is important because you have to be around people for so long. The point of streaming is that it is the longest form of content. <laughs> there is not a, a, a comparable length of content out there. Like uh, YouTube videos are not as long. And so if you are not authentic, you will become grading over time. And additionally, you will not be able to keep your mask up. And so uh, the problem with being overly produced and having media training and being like perfect all the time is that eventually if you're on camera enough, you're going to fuck shit up or your personal life is going to become an interest to people and you will fuck up there as well. I think content creating as a YouTuber and content creation as a streamer are different. And I think it's kind of important to acknowledge that unless you're somebody who focuses on uh, YouTube videos as a streamer and you kind of do streaming as an extra fun thing. People who are streamers first are typically going to do lower effort content. Do you know why? It's very simple. They have to stream probably approximately daily for many, many hours. And so a, a streamer's content is inherently lower effort because we got to do other stuff. We have to stream. You have to find a way to make content as a streamer that is efficient enough that you can keep up with it and post as much as you need to, however much that is, and also still stream and not uh, have no fucking time. People are not going to be doing Elden Ring lore videos that are two hours long that take six weeks to make when you're a streamer because you have to stream. I think people kind of get twisted that like that like YouTubers and streamers are kind of the same thing. Streamers typically do YouTube as an extra bit, you know, it's uh, to promote, promote, to create content, all of those things. However, YouTubers have more time because they do YouTube. They, if, they, if you don't stream, you just have so much more time. I, I think it's important to understand that because people are just like, you should do higher effort content. What is it that you expect? As somebody like where my, my primary thing is like, I wanna be a streamer. YouTube is my job so that I can do my streaming habit. I have a streaming problem. I can't afford it without the YouTube. <laughs> and so if your primary goal is to be a streamer, your content is going to be more efficient. It is going to be lower effort. It is going to be lower amounts of time. And that just is what it is. And that's okay. Not all content has to be super high effort. People like the content that I do, even if it is technically speaking, quote unquote, lower effort. The boy is but insane. Basically, it just pisses me off because that's really like trying to take the easy way out. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if they weren't faking their reactions and their actual real reactions, like, I would understand if you're a reaction content creator and you provide actual commentary to the video that you're watching instead of completely just copy and pasting. Even when it's on a stream, bro, when people are on stream, they'll be watching a video and they'll be eating while they're watching that video. I do the same thing. I be hungry. My stomach be touching my back. <laughs> but I provide commentary, man. I yap. I know it looks like I'm whacking. I provide. So yes, uh, I I very rarely eat on stream because I don't like the idea of y'all hearing me chew. The thought of y'all hearing me chew for some reason makes my skin crawl. I hate it. 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 If I could glaze myself a little bit here, I do think that I do a good job of providing good commentary to the videos that I watch. And I really have put in a lot of effort to be able to do that and do that efficiently and effectively also for my editor to finish it on time. But I try my best to give good commentary and uh, be respectful to the content that I'm watching because I don't want to just like be a vampire that takes and doesn't give anything back. I try to add something to everything that I watch. That's, a, that's an effort thing. But it's, uh, it's, it's worth it, I think. I think it makes my content better. It makes my content stand out. Could I sit here and go, mm-hmm, yeah, he right, that's true, the whole fucking time and never say anything at all and probably still do all right with the video? Yeah, maybe, probably. There's a lot of things that are like that where I could, but I try my best not only to give legitimate commentary and have an actual well-formed opinion and express myself, but also to be entertaining and funny and hilarious and very poggers and cool. I will never walk away uh, while, you know, watching a video unless it's like a dancing fruit for me to go piss. <laughs> I think it is a skill to be able to yap effectively, and I try my best to do that and give uh, give a good perspective. I think I give good commentary if I if I can. 
And honestly, if I don't think that I can add it, anything to something, then I won't watch it on stream and I certainly won't post it on YouTube. And all the actual like, like good quality content creators that react and yap and shit like that provide quality commentary. Okay? Yeah. Not just sitting there and watching the video to pass time so you can get ad revenue. That pisses me off. Stop. I agree. Don't say you want to be a content creator and then throw on a video, sit there, eat, not provide anything. And post the video. It's it's not 2014 anymore. You can't Okay, all right. I think that sometimes I can understand why people do this like actually on stream, right? Like if you if you have a meal and it makes sense if you're doing like a long stream or whatever, you're eating a meal, you put on a cool video, uh, and like maybe you don't do that much reaction because you're eating actively on stream. My problem is when they post it on YouTube. My problem is posting low quality shit like that on YouTube and um, receiving money for that when somebody put work into their video. Um, yeah, usually if you're eating your, you usually, yeah, watching something like Daily Dose, watching memes, watching TikTok, something like that, I think that's okay. I really don't mind. I don't think that watching something that is like intelligent and has had work put into it and then eating and posting it and not adding anything is okay. It kind of, it, it really sucks and I think it's really shitty. I've done a lot of different kinds of content as a content creator, like a lot. I've done high effort videos. I've done gameplay stuff. I've done fully scripted, fully edited. I've done memes. And I think uh, the reality is, is I like this kind of content creation the best because it suits my personality the best in a lot of ways. I'm a yapper. I like to give my opinions. I have a lot, I'm very passionate about things. I like to talk. And um, I will say that out of a lot of the kinds of content that I've done, reaction content and commentary content takes the most out of me as a person. So there are other kinds of content that I've done that are higher effort, that take a lot of time, that are exhausting and frustrating and tiring. But I think that the content that I do now takes the most out of me as a person and does take more specific skill than a lot of other kinds of content that I've tried. It definitely like people are like, oh, I wish we could, I wish we could go back to just gaming. Like when, what happened to the good gaming content? And I'm going to be real. It's not that hard to make gaming content interesting. First of all, it never does that well for me because I think I'm too much of a yapper, but I don't think that that content is like high skill content, especially if you're not doing like, I'm really good at gaming kind of gaming content. Okay. This kind of content has taken a lot more practice and has required me to learn a lot more skills than any other kind of content that I have attempted. I just do that. You need some type of, of value in your content, okay? 100%. This is completely off topic, but I've been pissing a lot of you off. I've been pissing you the fuck off, and I love it. It, it I can't, I was, I, I'm not gonna say what I was about to say, but it, <laughs> it does things to me that pleases me. Oh! Okay? Keep getting- He's getting hate and jerking his shit, that's crazy. Slay, I, I personally don't like the hate, but I do invite uh, intelligent and critical conversation. That's great. Pissed off. I love reading those comments, all those comments, those juicy comments of you getting mad. Who are you to say this? Who are you to say that? All you do is this. All you do is that. What are you going to do? You're just going to keep watching. You're going to keep on watching. That's true. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. No. Mwah. So cute no. ass. That was a way to end the video. <laughs> that was for sure one way to end that video. Um, I do not consent to that kiss. Thank you. Anyway, there are a lot of different kinds of content out there. There's a lot of different forms of reaction content. Some people react to true crime. Some people react to memes. I like to react to commentary videos and video essays and stuff like that because I like to have opinions on things that nobody asked for, but it's so, so fun. And I think that there is a good way to do reaction content that is as respectful as possible. And there is a shitty way to do content, uh, reaction content that is not respectful at all to the content that you're reacting to. I think as a content creator, it should be important to you that you add value to things that you react to because um, then why the fuck are you posting it if there's no value? Anyways, uh, go ahead and bitch about how disgusting and horrible reaction content is down in the comments. I know you're gonna be down there. Hi, hi, thanks for watching the video. Thank you for the engagement. It helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, but yeah, there's a good way to do things and a bad way to do things and all things. So I will see y'all later. Come to Twitch unless you want the grabby hands. Bye.